Hi, I'm Jill Simonello and I'm the managing editor at Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And this week, I actually have a pickup truck, but it's in the city of Chicago. And uh, in case you haven't noticed, it's the Ram TRX. Since Tim has already done a first drive review of this vehicle, we figured we'd try something a little bit different. And instead of doing your typical specs and let's take a closer look, we're actually gonna drive this around Chicago for a week and see what it can and can't do. So uh, we hope you have fun with it. We're gonna have fun with it, uh, but let's take a closer look at what this large vehicle can and can't do right now. Right, so the first thing we're going to try, we literally just got in this vehicle and I'm going to try and park it in my garage. So that's my garage. This is the truck. Uh, anyone placing bets on whether or not it will fit in my garage? All right, so here we go. <laughs> it does have a very large camera that's giving me a good view of my around view, but this is really large. I just don't want to get stuck in the alley. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? All right, so uh, my cameraman is saying no. I've got to take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think this is mentioned on this lowers. Uh, yeah, so it looks like I'm parking on the street for a week. Uh, so next video somewhere in the sequence is going to be, how does this thing parallel park? Stay tuned. All right, so I'm getting ready to go to the gym for an open studio workout, and uh, today's task is going to be seeing how the Ram TRX fits in a parking lot. <laughs> okay, I do want to point out stupid drivers, first off, but second, there is a bike lane on this street, and uh, well, it's not inherently narrow. The bike lane makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, and uh, I'm just kind of hoping I don't encounter any bikers because that would push me over the yellow line. This vehicle is definitely wider than, <laughs> than the lane. I mean, if the, the Nissan Murano can't manage to stay out of the bike lane, how, how am I gonna stay out of the bike lane? Thankfully, it doesn't look like there's a lot of people here. So I'm going to have some extra space, but I am probably not going to get one of the front parking spaces that I would normally get. Do I even try it? I got to try it, right? Ah, can I take up both parking spaces? I think that wouldn't be very nice. All right. So, um, let's, let's get the camera open here. 
All right, so this is me in the parking space. <laughs> I have to admit the person in the Honda actually moved back to accommodate me and give me more space. I still don't think I'm gonna fit. So uh, I'm gonna take this outside and we'll walk around and I'll show you and I have a feeling I'm gonna go find a spice at the back of the lot. All right, so I never would have made it into this spot if there were actually somebody next to me <laughs> in this space. Uh, but as you can see, I take up the full space here and I'm really close to that Lexus. So um, I have a feeling I'm gonna be a good soldier and I'm gonna go and repark in a different space because I don't wanna be that guy. <laughs> I really don't wanna be that guy. All right, so this seems like a much more appropriate spot, right? I mean, it's me in the dump truck. <laughs> All right, so I really didn't want french fries and therefore did not take you through the drive-in at the downtown McDonald's. However, I really would like a Starbucks. So we're gonna see how we fit in the Starbucks drive-through. We are currently on Elston Avenue and we are looking to get the Starbucks, ooh, Ford Bronco, uh, <laughs> Sport. Uh, we are looking to get a Starbucks um, down here a little bit. Now having these ground clearance signs are really super helpful. You'll see the one up ahead says nine feet, six inches. And uh, the TRX is 80.9 inches, which translates to six feet, 8.9 inches. So just under seven feet. The problem with this vehicle trying to hit some spaces in Chicago and most specifically hitting a garage space in Chicago, most of the clearances are six feet, seven inches. So this vehicle literally misses it by about an inch. Well, it was totally easier than I thought it would be. All right, so as you can see, it's another beautiful sunny day here in Chicago. And so today's task is just going to be to get some highway driving in. There are a couple of you who have asked for me to drive through a toll booth. So I'm gonna go hit the Chicago Skyway. Now, the added benefit of this is I'm going to try and put some highway miles on this truck and see if I can get the fuel economy to go up because frankly, right now I'm at 4.7 miles per gallon. All right, so as I'm heading towards the Chicago Skyway, um, and I should point out I'm driving on a Saturday, yet hello, there's actually traffic going on. Someone had asked me to drive during rush hour traffic, and uh, while there isn't a lot of rush hour traffic going on during the pandemic, there's apparently a lot of traffic on a rainy Saturday afternoon. So here I am driving on 9094, which at this point is called the Kennedy, uh, driving through and toward the city center of Chicago. All right, so uh, we are coming on to what is affectionately called the Hubbard's Cave in Chicago. And it is so named that because the street above it is Hubbard Street. So uh, Hubbard's Cave, Hubbard Street. The kind of thing to know about this area is the lanes kind of narrow and it's just a tight space when you are going through. Uh, however, as you can see, uh, on the right, up towards the front, there is an 18-wheeler going through, so a truck like the TRX is not really going to have a problem fitting through here. You just have to know your size proportions of the vehicle and stay in your lane. All right, so here we go. We are coming up on the first toll of the Chicago Toll Road. Uh, you'll, you'll probably see a sign coming up here that tells you how much it actually costs and it'll be five dollars and sixty cents uh, And I'm going to be going through and coming back. So uh, Tim, this is a reimbursable expense, right? Um, all right, so here we go. We have open road tolling and right now. I don't think they have cash lanes open simply because of the fact that um, It is the pandemic. So I'm going through a hands-free open tolling area and, you know, I feel like the clearance is fine. Yeah, that didn't bother me at all. It, you know, I mean, height, width, everything, it was totally fine going through. Today's drive through is going to be a Culver's. Oh, it's snowing, man. Ooh. 
Good times. Again, a nine foot six inch clearance. And about as many curves as we had when we were at the Starbucks. All right, so I just got my delivery at Culver's and the funny thing is I'm in this space waiting to get my food behind another vehicle that I just ordered and this vehicle is so long that the car behind me had to wait until I pulled forward after the car in front of me left so that it could actually go up to the window to pay. Uh, so good drive through experience for me, probably not such a good experience for the person behind me. All right, so I just got home and of course the parking spaces on my street have filled up. So. Uh, I'm going to try my hand at parallel parking. Let's see how this goes. I'm like this space might be just a little bit too small. Hey, the delay didn't... Oh yeah, no, I don't have the delay on. I actually fit. <laughs> All right, so we are now on day four of the test period in the Ram TRX, and I'm at a fueling station, but it's not because I'm on empty. I still have about a half of a tank of fuel in here. I'm filling up because we're going to take a little bit of a road trip. I have a surprise for you that I'm not going to tell you about just yet, but we're here not only because of the road trip, but also because I wanted you to see how this fits in a Chicago fueling station. And I'm not going to lie, I had to do some maneuvering to get into this space. Now, as I'm fueling up, two things I want you to know. One, this has a 33 gallon tank, so hopefully you won't have to be at the gas station too frequently if you own this truck. But thing number two is the fact that this only takes premium fuel. So premium fuel is required in the TRX. And here in Chicago, that's $3.50 a gallon. So this is gonna be an expensive truck to own and an expensive truck to fuel up. Because we can't seem to get enough of the drive-through experience. Yeah, this is totally not gonna to work. <laughs> I love my husband. I'm gonna to have to like come at this a different direction. Oh, I know the answer. I just have to get there. Right. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make that around the corner in the front. All right, screw it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so abort, abort, abort. I just looked up in the front and uh, there is another uh, really tight turn with no place for me to maneuver. So we are 100% aborting and um, people are trying to block me, but that's okay. Abort. He had his reverse lights on. All right, let's try this again. I'm like, there was no way, because that was just as tight of a turn up front than it was trying to get in there. That was not going to work. <laughs> All right, so after our failed mission in the city to go to a Dunkin' Donuts drive through uh, we figured we would uh, try again on the road. We are at the Lake Forest Oasis, and uh, I'm hoping that this drive through will be a little bit more uh, truck compatible. Although, this is kind of funny. The window is really far down in comparison to the truck. That's funny. All right, 
I mean, come on. I don't know if you can see this, but that's funny. All right, so now it is time for the surprise. I brought you to an airfield at an undisclosed location somewhere outside of Chicago. And while I know this doesn't quite fit with the theme of what we're trying to do here, you can't give me a vehicle like this and not expect me to try launch control. We just wanted to be sure that we did it safely. So we have a friend who owns an airfield. We came out to one of his runways and I brought my helmet. So let's go check it out. Nine. Fastest zero to sixty you've ever done? Uh, no. This is a big ass vehicle. Uh, I've done faster zero to sixties in the Challenger, the Charger. How also fast? with a professional coach sitting in the in the seat telling me, "Hey, by the way, now take your foot off the brake." This was all me. Three point nine seconds. Feeling pretty proud of that. By the way, for reference, everybody was like, you look taller or shorter than the head thing. <laughs> ah. All right. All right, thank you for indulging me. That was a lot of fun. My zero to 60 mile per hour time was 3.9 seconds and my zero to 100 was 9.5 seconds. So hard to believe that a truck this big can actually get numbers like that. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And unfortunately, now we're taking it back to Chicago. All right, so we are in the Logan Square area, and um, I have an ATM in mind that I'm going to try to turn into right now. I think I'm going to fit. My husband said that he didn't think I would, so here it goes. <laughs> I cleared it. I feel like uh, the truck is just as wide as this uh, little alley here. All right, I, I, I honestly don't know if I'm gonna fit into that. Um, hmm. This could be funny. I see the express van is there, so uh, we'll see how this works. And now there's people behind me, so <laughs> this will be fun if I can't do this. So, all right. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do it. I'm on something. I got to go check. Not that one. So it's this one. All right. <laughs> I am totally on a curb somewhere. So I fit. Let's see if I can actually take the money out. <laughs> I might have to back up a little bit for that. All right, there we go. Okay, I really wish there was somebody filming from the outside because that would have been flipping funny. All right, so one of my wheels is on something. My saving grace here is gonna be that this has a nice straight out. Huh. 
and my rear fenders are just clearing this. But there you go. I had success. I came to a very small city ATM and I managed to get in and out without scraping anything. I'm gonna consider that a success, even if I was up on the curb. All right, so mischief managed. I <laughs> wasn't actually sure that I would get in and out of that ATM slot, especially once I started to pull in, but I did and uh, there you go. So that's probably one of the smaller ATM slots you will find in the city of Chicago and this truck managed to fit. All right, so as I am wrapping up this review, I would be pretty remiss if I didn't at least take a look at the engine. As you know, this is the 6.2 liter V8 supercharged. So, yep, this is the Hellcat engine, but it's been retuned to deliver 702 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. As you saw the other day, that's plenty of power to do a really good launch using launch control. While we've got this open, I will point out that the washer fluid is right here, so it's easy for even somebody like me to reach, but the dipstick, nope, that is going to be right back there. And finally, before we close the hood, you gotta take one last look at this really cool Easter egg, which has a little bit of a shot at the Ford Raptor. All right, well, it is time to wrap up my week in the 2021 Ram TRX. And while I've really enjoyed driving it, I'm gonna have to say, frankly, I'm not gonna miss it that much because the first thing that I did every morning when I woke up is I looked out my window to one, make sure it was still there, and two, make sure the tire was in the back. And imagine my relief when every morning I woke up, <laughs> both of those things were true. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed driving around with me in Chicago this week to see where this truck could go. Uh, I hope that you are subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and uh, be sure to hop on over to the web and uh, check us out at pickuptrucktalk.com. I'll see you down the road.